God is faithful to the very end of everything. If you have your Bibles this evening, Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 18. Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 18. Glad to be in the Lord's house this Wednesday evening. No better place than to be in the very presence of Jehovah God. See if I can get by without knocking that off tonight. <laughs> I laugh you here Sunday night. I think I knocked half the pulpit off. <laughs> Everything kept falling down before me. That ready to call Charlie. I think I broke the sound system again. <laughs> they sell them every day. God's faithful. We're going to talk about something, John, that even sometimes even the strongest faith can be shaken. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Even in some of the greatest prophets of God, even that there are times faith can be shaken. No difference in the case of John right here where I read. He asked the question, are you he that we are to look for? Are you he? No doubt. Most of us have asked that before. Are you the one? Are we to look towards you? Even in the midst of adversity, even in the midst of trials and situations, when everything don't go right, I want you to know God's still working tonight. God's still faithful. Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 19 right there. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you he who should come, or look we for another? When the men were coming to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto you, saying, Are ye he who would come, or look we for another? another? And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities, plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many who were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering and said unto them, Go your way and tell John, what things you have seen and heard, how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he who shall not, shall not be offended in me. The heart of my message Right there in verse 19. Are you he? Are you he? Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. And we lift you up, dear God. And we praise you, Lord. And we glorify you, Lord. And we ask you, God, for your anointing in here tonight, dear God. Anoint me to speak your word like I've never spoke a word before. Father, tonight we pray, Lord, for your anointing, dear Father, to flow upon this service, dear God. Flow into this community, dear God. Have your way, dear Lord, tonight, God. Let us not forget that you are the one that we look towards tonight. There is no other but you tonight, Father. Lord, through all adversity, through all setbacks, Lord. Father, we pray, God, for the anointing to flow, Lord, and let us keep looking at you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. It is easy to look towards God when everything's going good, ain't it? It is easy to look towards Him when there's not no trouble in the riffles. It's easy to look towards Him when you're skip, skip, skip to the loo going around, ain't it? When all the bills are paid, the finances is looking good, everything's set and fine and handy. It's the time, those times they ain't one that can say, I don't trust God during those times because sun is shining and there's not a cloud in the sky. But what about those times, oh, when you find yourself, your faith is under fire? The Bible tells us that our faith will be tried in the fire. It will tell us what our faith is truly made out of. It will show us whether we have genuine faith or fool's faith. Even in those times, let me tell you, when we remain faithful, no doubt, doubt sometimes kinds of creep in, don't it? 
Sometimes that unbelief will try to settle in there. No difference. And it didn't just happen to you. Let me tell you, it's happened to many great men and women of God throughout times. One can go through the Word of God and begin to see. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. How even some of the great prophets of God would have lapses in their faith. Even some with the strongest faith. You would see a lapse or two in it at a point. I begin to look at this scripture the, the Monday, Tuesday. Sometimes during that time period I get my days and I get my dates mixed up anymore. I think it's Sunday when it's really Wednesday sometimes. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is sometimes when we're going through it we forget the faithfulness of God. And we forget everything that God has brought us through and everything we saw before. All we find ourselves is in a place of despair and darkness. I begin to look at this passage of Scripture and it began to stand out when the great man of God, the one that Jesus said no one is greater in the kingdom of God than John the Baptist, one of my favorite characters in the Bible, by the way, because he didn't care to just hit it on the nail head, did he? He didn't care to just spit it out like it was. He was a wild man. He wouldn't be welcomed in many pulpits today. But John found himself imprisoned right here. John found himself subject to Herod and on death row and on the execution chamber line to be beheaded. When John uttered these words, Are ye he that we look for? Or shall we look for another? John, this faithful servant of God, it seems like at this point, sitting in a dungeon or a cell, it ain't nothing like you see now in the jail cells, but I'm telling you, in them times, it wasn't nothing fancy. It was almost disgusting what they had to lay in. There wasn't no cemented floors or beds or anything like that. But the cells were places where species were around. It was cold. It was damp. It wasn't nothing pretty. Getting there, I imagine they probably had him chained. I don't know. But I imagine he was well guarded along the way because they wanted to put him to death. And I can imagine when he uttered these words, he looked around at his environment. Are you he that when he sent his disciples? Or should we look? For another, even now it tells me, even now sometimes the most faithful of God's servants, their faith can be shaken in the midst of the circumstance. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Especially a circumstance that seems to take you off guard. Especially something that seems to rattle you and you wonder, are you he that we should be looking for? Are you wondering, are you, are you still moving today, God? Are you still working today, God? Let me tell you, it's during those times that sometimes we got to get back and we've got to remember the faithfulness of God. We've got to remember everything that God has done for us before. But it's in those dark times it seems like we tend to forget what God has done before that he'll do again. Amen. It's during those dark times we tend to forget uh, what God has brought us for in this time. It's during those dark times uh, we tend to forget the very promises of God before us. Uh, let me tell you that that time when that faith is shaken, you have forgotten about what God has done before. It seems faith even it seems to be shaken even among some of God's greatest servants in the Bible, Moses and Elijah. At times, their faith would be shaken. Anybody know about the great man Elijah, who was a man that called the fire down from heaven? But it wasn't 
soon after that uh, he would find himself cowering under a juniper tree uh, and hiding from a loud mouth named Jezebel uh, but the angel of the Lord told him uh, get up from there uh, oh Elijah get up from there uh, how many know tonight that if uh, Jezebel could have killed him from day one uh, that she would have killed him from day one uh, how many know tonight that if the devil could have killed you uh, from the very beginning he would have killed you from the very beginning uh, how many know tonight uh, that if the devil could have killed this church from day one he would have killed it uh, but I've come out to tell you tonight uh, that there's still one there uh, there's still one moving uh, there's still one by our side tonight even in the New Testament Peter and Paul's faith could be shaken at times amen but listen I'm telling you, this Bible tells us tonight. A man, theologian named Spence, said this. He said, it's thus every, every, the practice of the Holy Scripture, while it tenderly and lovingly handles the characters of its heroes, it never flinches from the truth. We see God's noblest uh, saints such as Moses and Elijah, John's own prototype, you know, he had that same spirit Elijah did, didn't he? In the Old Testament, Peter and Paul in the New Testament depicted in this book of truth with all their faults and nothing is hid. He said there is only one flawless character that appears in this storied book uh, in its pages uh, and it is the master of Peter and Paul uh, who never turns aside uh, from the path of righteousness uh, and who he was talking about right there was Jesus Christ amen uh, I'm telling you tonight there's times when faith is going to lapse uh, there's times when things are going to look bad uh, there's times that things are going to seem to sink uh, that will shake in your faith uh, but I I've come by to tell you tonight uh, he's still on the throne. Uh, I've come by tonight to tell you uh, that God's still faithful. I've come by to tell you tonight uh, he ain't going to let you sink. Uh, he ain't going to let this church sink. Uh, I've come by to tell you tonight uh, that God's still operating. <laughs> oh, it's an that trolley fire. I'll tell you, I begin to think, why in the world do people get their eyes? Why in the world does faith seem to be shaken? Why in the world does it seem like even sometimes the strongest faith can be shaken? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever had their faith shaken? You wonder, are you he? Are you he? Sometimes that faith shaking, I'm telling you. And I was studying this, and the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me. He said it's simple. The reason sometimes even the greatest prophets, even the strongest faith is shaken, is they get their eyes off of me. And they get their eyes focused on everything that's all around them. They begin to focus on the problem. They begin to focus on the Goliath. They begin to focus on the fire. They begin to focus on the lions. They begin to focus on the prison cell. They begin to focus on the beatings. And they got their eyes off of me. And you wonder why your faith gets shaken sometimes. I'm telling you, if you keep your eyes on him, everything's going to be alright it's when you get your eyes off him does man begin to sink you know I begin to think about a story in the word of God first of all let me tell you what Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 his words right here says while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let me tell you what he's talking about. 
He's talking about everything beside of you. It's temporary. It's not forever. I got news for you tonight. This thing ain't forever. This thing's temporary. The problems of this world, it's temporary. It's not forever. The situations that you're facing tonight is temporary. But it's not forever. Did you hear me? We may not have a piano player tonight. But I've come by to prophesy that it's a temporary.